On Energy Timelines, we bring intelligent conversations and interesting personalities discussing critical issues that shape the industry, even the economy of Nigeria. Join us every weekday on Energy Day TV. Hello and welcome to the program Energy Timelines on Energy Day TV. My name is Monique Agbe. Today on the program, we will be talking to the former executive chairman, Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, Moman. He also doubles as the managing director, chief executive officer, Double One PLC, formerly known as Mobile Oil Nigeria PLC. His name is Mr. Tunji Oyebanji. The transportation of petroleum products across the country remains a challenge as trucks owned by your members continue to get involved in accidents. So what are you doing to help reduce the rate of these incidents by your members' truck? Okay, first let me clarify. Most of us do not own trucks. We contract them to people who are professionals in the transport uh, business. The fact that you see our name, uh, some of the companies have their names on the trucks does not mean they own them. Uh, but that is by the wayside. The real uh, uh, question is how do we ensure that truck safety, uh, product delivery safety in Nigeria is improved because the incidence of accident has been uh, very, very high. Uh, we have very various initiatives that we have uh, undertaken over time. Um, I will mention a few. Uh, first, we have very close collaboration with the Federal Road Sa Safety Corps. Uh, in fact, we held a joint seminar last year, I believe, in Abuja, where we invited uh, all stakeholders uh, and we talked about various initiatives uh, to improve road safety. One of that was the posting of road safety officers to various terminals across the country to jointly inspect trucks when they come in to load at our various terminals to ensure that they have the minimum standards so that we don't have uh, uh, trucks that are bad or ill-equipped being loaded for supply of products. Then. Uh, we as uh, an industry association have also uh, embarked on training of our tanker drivers. That's the, the hauliers who move product for us. Um, one of our members actually has a big training uh, facility in Ibadan where um, drivers go for training on how to handle and how to maneuver uh, the trucks that we, we have. So that is available again for all our members to make use of uh, to, in order for them to, to train their drivers. You see, one of the areas where we have in the past complained about when we talk about this subject of deregulation is that the margins, that's the amount we earn on a liter of petrol was fixed by government. Because the pump price is fixed, government now had to fix all the components also. So how much we make as marketers, how much the transporters make, all these things were fixed by fiat. And sometimes the cost of maintaining, whether it's our terminals, whether it's the trucks, the cost has gone much higher than what government allowed on the templates. You know, members of the public will not know this or they do not see this. If you allow two naira per liter for transportation, for instance, but the real cost of maintaining a truck when you work out the numbers, maybe it's two naira fifty or three naira. You can see that the two naira that has been allowed in that template, that fixed amount of money is not enough to cover the cost of maintenance not to talk of generating enough to allow you to buy brand new trucks so first and foremost investment in that equipment is generally 
old equipment, 35 years, 40 year old truck to start with. And now the amount from that fixed margin is also not adequate to carry out the required uh, uh, maintenance. So when we see all these incidents of truck rollover, brake failure, or whatever, some of it, you can trace it back to the fact that the price is fixed, the margin is fixed. It is not adequate to even keep the existing rolling stock, the existing uh, equipment in tip-top shape, not to talk about investing ideally in new equipment that will be much more robust and have modern safety standards and so on and so forth. So all these things are interwoven. Uh, and we hope that with the signing of PIB and moving to a completely liberalized market now, what will happen is that those who are not able to compete uh, will fall by the wayside. Only those who are efficient, who know what they are doing at the operations, will be able to uh, survive uh, the test of time, which we, we believe will all, all go well for the country eventually. At the just concluded offshore technology conference 2021, operators said oil and gas is key to energy transition. What is your perspective on the Nigerian energy industry? Well, okay. Um, as you know, we have been a crude oil nation, more or less, for uh, maybe since the 1950s, when oil was first discovered. Uh, but over time, I think we have now come to realize that rather than being an oil nation that has some gas, we are now beginning to realize that we are actually a gas nation that actually has some oil. So I think we can put ourselves in a situation where we will say that we are in transition. We are in transition from focusing wholly on crude oil production and exploitation to getting more investment in the area of gas. And I expect to see more of that in the, in the years to come. Indeed, as you know, the Minister uh, of State of, for Petroleum has declared this the decade for gas. So the expectation is that we are going to uh, see a lot more investment in the gas area. In fact, the vision of the minister is basically to see that a large number of vehicles, uh, commercial vehicles, private vehicles, are powered by gas in the next few years. Uh, and I know they are working hard to, with NMPC, uh, CBN and other stakeholders to make sure that that happens. Having said all that, uh, it is clear that uh, crude is not also going to go away uh, very quickly. Uh, for many, many more years to come, crude oil is still going to be a very uh, critical part of the energy mix. The only thing is that as the years go by, we will begin to see a gradual increase in other uh, energy forms, other renewable forms. So apart from gas, which I've spoken about, you begin to see uh, more investment in solar uh, energy forms, wind uh, energy, all those other, uh, you know, um, areas. But for them to be at the level of you know, gasoline, diesel, uh, that kind of thing, I believe it will still take many more years for us to get to that point. In what way have you improved on better operational environments for members under your leadership? Okay. Um, we, we believe that uh, self-regulation is the best regulation. Um, in the last two years, when I have been chairman, we have initiated some programs to maintain these uh, standards, which we believe are world standards. So periodically, for instance, we 
get an external body to go around to check all the pumps in our member stations to ensure that they are dispensing the right amount of fuel. So rather than waiting for DPR or Ministry of Trade to go around to do all those exercises, we do it ourselves. And we are able to identify and take up with the individual companies areas where we feel something may be lacking. Also, uh, we carry out similar inspection on our depots and terminal facilities. Again, verifying the meters to make sure that they are delivering the appropriate quantities, uh, making sure that appropriate safety standards are being maintained in all our depots. And as you may have seen, uh, hardly have you heard any news of uh, um, our depots having any issue either around safety or fire or anything like that. So the third area is the one I spoke to you about, which has to do with the trucking. Although we don't own the trucks, but we are working very closely with the transporters to train their staff. Uh, in some cases, some of our members have actually supported their hauliers by providing investment funds for them to actually acquire new equipment to operate. Uh, so all these are initiatives that we have put in place in the last couple of years, which are, are improving the professionalism. The aim of our association is to make our group the uh, focal point in terms of industry standards, in terms of direction, that the industry should uh, go. And uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of setting those standards. What strategic role has Moment played in the advancement of the industry standards? And how has this impacted on the outlook of the downstream sector? Well, OK, I think that is more or less what I've just uh, said in my last answer. We, we've looked at all those particular areas to uh, if you will, set the standards. Uh, what I would also say in addition is we've tried to work uh, with DPR to help improve capacity. Um, as you know, some of our members have uh, international uh, connections, so we have tried to bring some of this expertise to bear uh, in terms of standards of trucking, in terms of standards on retail outlet construction uh, and so on and so forth. So we will continue to do that along with all these other things I spoke to you about earlier. Well, the, it, it's definitely something that uh, is very topical at a global level. Um, I think a lot of that has also have to, it has to be domesticated in terms of uh, the rules and regulations under which we are going to operate going forward. I'm aware, for instance, that uh, in the PIB, it talks about a minimum standard of AFRI-5, which is uh, the, the standard agreed by uh, the African Refiners Association in terms of uh, um, how much uh, carbon emission sulfur must be in the products that are being sold. So by having such a limit, it, um, at least it's a standard for us to, others may have moved even faster, higher than, to higher levels, but for us here it is a, a start. I think that um, uh, our role as moment will be to work with the uh, government to make sure that at least that minimum standard of uh, AFRI-5 is set. Um, if all our domestic supply will come from the Dangote refinery, then already we are sure that that standard is met because the refinery is being built to those uh, standards, uh, which will then mean that if anybody else at all is going to bring in any product, they must ensure that that minimum uh, standard uh, is adhered to in bringing in any product into the country. So, yes, uh, the, I think the starting point really has to be 
the, the laws and the rules and regulations under which we operate. As the MD and CEO of Double One PLC, take us through your journey, please. Well, okay, as you know, we used to be known as Mobile Oil Nigeria PLC. Um, in 2017, that association has been a subsidiary of the ExxonMobil Group, uh, ended with the sale of the ExxonMobil shares in Mobile Oil Nigeria to Nipco Investments Limited. Uh, so, um, our journey from, I would say, over a hundred years ago, up to 2017, was under the banner of First Mobile and then Exxon Mobile. Uh, um, because originally, too, we were just mobile. But when the merger between Exxon and Mobile happened around 1999, 2000, we became uh, Exxon Mobil. So the journey had, con had started from 1907 uh, to take us all the way to 2017. Uh, and uh, 2017, so I'd like to talk more about the current and recent uh, days. What we have uh, seen and done is uh, significant investment has been made in the company. We've uh, extended our storage uh, facilities uh, for various white products. We have uh, constructed uh, a brand new LPG uh, facility where we have uh, 8,000 metric tons of LPG uh, storage. Uh, we had left the aviation business. Uh, these last three years we have uh, returned back fully into the aviation business and have now become one of the major players uh, in the aviation fuel marketing uh, space. Uh, we have also made significant in, in investment in our lubrication facilities, increased our storage capacity, we've more than doubled our storage capacity for finished uh, lubricants. So we have done uh, our own bits in all these uh, various spheres. Um, and we are still making more investments and we hope to do much more in the future so that we'll be well positioned uh, for whatever the industry has following the PIB that has just been signed. How do you access the impact of the pandemic on your company's overall performance? Yeah, uh, it's, been a, it's a, been a big challenge. Um, Obviously, we, when things started getting very hairy around February, March 2020, we immediately complied with all the various uh, government regulations, uh, uh, protocols, uh, which I'm sure even you're coming here, you've still seen some of those uh, protocols in place. Um, we have adhered strictly to limiting the capacity of staff in the office. So uh, generally, you hardly find where more than 60, 65% of the capacity. So which means some people are working from home uh, where they can. Of course, not all our staff can work. From, you cannot load a petrol tanker from home, no matter how uh, enthusiastic you are. You have to be where the product is and where the truck is to be able to achieve it. Um, of course, last year, with the lockdown and restriction on movement, that obviously impacted our business in terms of uh, uh, sales and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, I would say we're beginning to stabilize a bit. Uh, only we're a bit worried about some of the recent developments in the COVID uh, space. We also contributed along with Moman, uh, other Moman members. Uh, we donated 250 million to the COVID uh, uh, through working with NMPC uh, to invest in some facilities in, uh, uh, in Abuja to prepare people for, for COVID. So, Yes, it has had a direct impact both within 
and uh, externally, but uh, we are still here and uh, we hope to continue to be here. Despite the direct impact of COVID-19 on your company's net profit for 2020, double one PLC total assets increased by 91.18 billion naira in 2020 to 95.45 billion naira in 2020. Please tell us, what is the secret? Yes, well, you know, I told you that we have been making massive investments and I, uh, I think I gave you a few examples like the brand new LPG uh, facility. These were very, very massive investments, uh, 8,000 metric tons of uh, storage. We have built two or three new tanks for white products. All these uh, have improved or increased our assets. But in addition, uh, last year we uh, acquired the Lagos Continental Hotel. Uh, and that is now one of our subsidiary uh, companies. So all these have uh, helped to build our asset base to much higher levels than it has been in the past. And the whole aim, like I said, is to make our company resilient, to be able to withstand, you know, the various cycles that sometimes take place in the oil industry. So we have uh, different streams of income so that if this aspect is not doing well, this aspect can be doing well. So that's the philosophy that we have adopted. Thank you for joining us on the program today, Energy Timelines on Energy Day TV. My name still remains Monique Agbe. Do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms showing on your screen. Join us again, same time, same station, next week.